God is good. It is funny because, um, uh, yeah, last week we had laser beams and in, 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 we inherited a bit of a uh, ministry network here as a church called uh, Renaissance Coalition. And um, uh, we've, been, we've got ministers all, all, all over the world and, and we've been doing a, a lot of interaction with them. We got, we got an email this last week from, from, from one particular person that, that um, had, had some opinions on our, on our website. And, um, and that's okay, because uh, I've been known to have some opinions on things before, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but she felt like she should share, share her, her opinion. So basically, she didn't like our website. You know, she felt like our website um, basically communicated everything that is wrong with the church right now. <laughs> Which I didn't know that a website could communicate everything that is wrong with it. But if you want to see everything that is wrong with the church right now, just go to renaissancecoalition.com and you'll, um, <laughs> she said, this is that, that smoke machine, laser beam kind of thing that this generation has replaced the anointing with, you know. And, um, and I, I thought that was hilarious because we, we, we literally just had a freaking laser beam, right? I was like shooting over my head during a, during a sermon. I was like, this is, this is epic. This is, incre- this is incredible. So I replied back to her with pictures from our Sunday morning service of all the laser beams. And I was just like, hey, you know, we're living in a time when we get to communicate an old message in new ways. And, um, and, 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 Personally, I don't believe that Holy Spirit gets bummed out by lasers. I think, I think that wait till you see the, if light shows bum you out, you're going to hate heaven. Like, he's got like, <laughs> if smoke bums you out, you're going to hate, like, you're going to cloud world, baby, right? Like, with, like, with, like, living rainbows everywhere. Like, did that rainbow just wink at me? It's like, Rah! it's like, heaven's going to be freaky. So we're just trying to get you ready for heaven, you know? And so I, I, so I, I sent her some pictures, and I was just like, hey, we had both and, right? We had the, we had the laser beams and the anointing, right? Like, we had smoke machines and healings. Hey, it's, a, it's, it's possible, right? And so um, uh, anyways, man. Um, God is good, and today we're in Genesis chapter 1, um, still. Uh, we'll be here at this rate for uh, the next 80, 100 years. And um, uh, looking at one word each week, and, and, and this, the, the, sometimes it feels like Sesame Street, you know, like there's the word of the day, you know, Grover. Like, like, like the, <laughs> far, right? Like the word of the day is... Or, good, whoever, whoever said, this is um, O-W-R, okay, O-W-R, and, um, and Patty could help me with it, like, it's or, but, but they roll the, 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 the R, and so I had to watch a YouTube video on how to do that. Now, let me just tell you something. If you've never rolled your R's before, you can't just do it from watching a YouTube video. Like, I was... The family, I was, up at, uh, I was up early this morning, the family's all sleeping, and I'm sitting downstairs in my office going, <laughs> and the guy's like, no, like, relax your, like, he's talking to me, he's like, Darren, like, relax your tongue, and don't do like the American, because the American R is you want to pull your tongue back. So don't pull your tongue back. Okay, I'm not trying to pull my tongue back. You're going to go right up underneath your teeth, and just go, uh, and then get got an airstream going. Get your airstream going. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, like I'm sitting there drooling on myself. <laughs> and then how do I get the O R R in? Like so. Anyways, we're just gonna say or this morning. Everybody say or. Very good. Yes. Yes. And the word means light. And so we're gonna be looking at light this morning. And um, uh, uh, this is a fascinating, fascinating word. It means to, uh, to uh, illuminate, like, to fill, fill with light, light everywhere. And so uh, that's, that's where we're going. Um, in the beginning, right, it, it, it begins with in the beginning, Barashit. So in, in the beginning, in the first epoch of time, um, when there wasn't anything, there was still someone who, Elohim. Mighty God, 
the one who is worthy to be worshipped. So, um, barashit Elohim bara, which is the word to create, right? Um, to 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 design and 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 make divinely made manifest. So in this epoch of time, in this period, not a point of time, but in this period of time, God created um, the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was without form and, uh, and, and empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the great deep. Okay? We talked about this last week, the, the Hebrew word um, uh, 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 something. What, what was it? Koshek, Koshek, Koshek. This word is interesting because it's a metaphor throughout the Bible, not just the darkness, darkness, yes, but also for, um, uh, for, for anything that's, that's to do with evil, e- even sometimes referring to um, an, an evil uh, entity. It's also interesting here, it says, um, so uh, the earth was without form and there was uh, empty, empty waste. You got this word um, tohu, which is this idea of just total randomness and just and just and just chaos so um so in the beginning there he was elohim and what did he do he bara he he created and where did he create okay he created in the middle of the chaos waters okay and it says here that right here in this in this um environment in this crazy in this dark environment the spirit of god was doing what the spirit of god was was there and he's doing something spirit what are you doing he was <laughs> hovering so right there in the darkness right there in the chaos was the spirit of god and he was hovering he was the the the, the word there can be translated brooding <laughs> Brooding where? Over the face of the chaos waters. That's my God. My God doesn't run from chaos. He hovers in it. (laughs) And right there, um, in that place, God says something. And it's written, and God said. Now, everybody say that with me. And God said. All right, this is interesting because we're reading God's word, but this is the first time that God speaks in his word. So God speaks, <laughs> so this is God's word, but this is his word within the word. And this, what we're going to study today is like the very first thing that, that God says. And we have, to, we have to stop here. We have to look at this very first um, occurrence of, of God speaking. And we have to ask, what's happening here? Like when he speaks, what's actually, what's actually taking place here? And some people would say, well, we can't really know for sure. We can't really can't really see it. It's too abstract. It's, it's, it's too weird. This is like, this is, it's, it's, this is the beginning of, of, of everything. It's so mystical and, and it's so Hebrew. Okay? <laughs> and, and, and poetic. So nobody can really know um, what it was like in this, in this moment, in this moment of, of the beginnings of, 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 of everything. But I think that's It's kind of interesting because God likes to set up these living prophetic dramas that we can actually see with our eyes that connect us to moments in the ancient past and even the future. So when people say that there's no way we can really know, there's no way we can really see what it was like in the beginning, I would say... No, I think there is. I think that God has has created these 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 um, these testimonies. Yeah, it's almost like He has created these testimonies within nature and within our lives. And so, whenever you're curious about something from the past or in the future, you find the record of the testimony within the present, and you can begin to engage with your eyes open in this realm and begin to see a parallel thing that took place within the past or in the future. SRC, are you with me? Are you with me? Oh, yeah. So now, for us, we're talking about the origin of everything. Here's the question I'm asking. Is it possible for us to actually to see with our eyes in the present something that took place in the ancient past? And I would say yes. And so what are we trying to examine specifically? We're trying to examine 
our origin, our origin story. So if we're trying to discover the origin of everything in the ancient past, where do we look? We look to the origin of humanity in the present. Okay, good. So if we're going to do that, then where should we read this text? In order to see this text in ancient past, we go into the origin of the present. And I had never actually done this before, except for at the 9 a.m., and it went kind of well. But we're going we're gonna to do Genesis 1 in the womb. Boom! Now, what you're listening to right now is an actual recording from inside a womb. It's dark. For a baby, it's somewhat actually chaotic. In fact, it's very, very loud in a womb. So here in this darkness, here in this chaos waters, let's read it again. You ready? This church is weird. Here we go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is not the church with the postcard. No weird stuff, right? <laughs> We're like, hey, you sick and normal? Come to SRC. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Barashit, in the beginning, Elohim, mighty God, prepared formed, fashioned, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, an empty waste. Darkness was upon the face of the great deep. And the Spirit of God, the Ruach, the breath of God, was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the chaos waters. And God said, Declare that with me. And God said. Now, what is this? God speaking. He speaks where? In the darkness. And this is the crazy part. Throughout the Bible, when we hear about God's word, which is the voice of the Lord being released on the earth, often the word of God is referred to as seed. In fact, the term seed is used 44 times in the New Testament. The Greek word for seed is sperma, which in English is sperm. And you're like, oh, great, Darren's talking about sperm again on Sunday mornings. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's why there's children's church. Okay. Check it out. When God speaks, his very seed is released. And what he says is only too appropriate. What does he say? Say it with me. Let there be light. Boom. Now, what you see behind me, you say, what, what is it? What's going on there? Is some sort of footage of, of a planet. Okay, what, what, what you're actually seeing uh, behind me um, is recent captured footage. Um, this, is, this is actually a big deal because what we're actually seeing is an explosion, yes, but this is not a big bang out in outer space, okay? This is an origin moment in someone's most inner space. What you're seeing is an egg at the very moment that there is conception. In 2016, for the very first time ever, scientists captured images of a flash of light that sparks at the very moment a human sperm cell makes contact with an egg. We could never see what actually happened in the beginning. We could never see what, what took place at that moment of glorious and divine creation. Maybe we can. 
This phenomenon has been observed in animals before, but no one had ever seen what they refer to as the spark of human conception. And what's even more incredible is the fact that some eggs burn brighter than others, which is a direct indication of their ability to develop a healthy embryo. The explosion is basically billions of zinc atoms released at the exact moment an egg is pierced by a sperm cell. So, in the beginning, God speaks, and what happens? There's an explosion of light. But this isn't just the creation of light. This is God actually creating the womb, the perfect environment by which he will knit together all of the cosmos. And what did God do? In verse 4, it says that God saw that the light was good. It was suitable and pleasant. It says that he approved of it. And God separated. So he, he divided the light from the darkness. He carved it. And, and God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening. And there was morning. And we see God. He approves of what he just did. And what does he do here on the first day? He's in the darkness, he comes into the darkness, he creates, and how does he create? He creates by dividing. This will begin our study of what I refer to as redemptive division. The church has been taught that division is evil, that division is of the devil. So unity is of God and division is of the devil. That's not necessarily the case because for the very first three days of creation, God creates by speaking and dividing. The problem isn't bringing division. The problem is where are you bringing division? If you're bringing division in the light, your father is the devil. If you're bringing division to the darkness, your father is mighty God. This is why the church has advocated her authority. This is why the church has crawled under a rock thinking that the world's going to be changed by amazing sermons in YouTube. This is why the church has been defined as events instead of being defined by a glorious and beautiful bride that's courageous enough to interact in a very dark world. In the beginning, what did mighty God do? He did what he does and what he's going to do because God didn't just create silly pants. Yes, he created, but why did he do it? He created because he is a creator. He can't help himself. It's just, oops, I created. You and I are created in the image and likeness of a brilliant mastermind creator. The reason why a lot of our creations aren't noticed is because we're creating light within the light, and so there's zero contrast. Light within light is zero contrast and makes zero difference. And so we train up our children who are brilliant little musicians and songwriters and we say that they should create Christian music for Christians that can be played on a Christian radio station. Light within light, zero contrast and no hope goes forth. Sure, we encourage Christians to live another day, but come on, when are we going to grow up, church? That in the beginning, mighty God, Bara, he created, and he created where? In the darkness. He created by speaking and dividing. It's time for the church to go into the darkness and to create, and to create by bringing division to the darkness. 
which means that Seattle needs to see a contrast. God sees the light. He blesses his light. He approves of it. He divides. He carves. He's creating a womb. And sure, what did God create on the first day? Yep. Yep, he created light. But it's more than that, isn't it? He says, let there be light. And boom we begin to see that the light brings the government of God to carve out the first realm of time. So here is God, and he says, there's darkness, let there be light, and then he carves it out, and he says, the light will be called day, and the darkness will be called night, and we begin to see this incredible cycle that takes place for the very first Time And it is this place of repetition, and yet it is not just um, mere tradition or religion. What is it? It's a rhythm by which the symphony of the cosmos will be multilayered and begin to come up and out. Humanity needs the rhythm of God, which is repetition. And praise the Lord that in the midst of whatever chaos the enemies tried to throw at you, you still know that tonight the sun will set in the day will turn tonight and you'll lay your head down on a pillow and you'll take a deep breath as your soul begins to go and your spirit man begins to activate and there within that place your body, your mind, your emotions will begin to be restored because God created the day and he created the night and the night leads to the day, leads to the night leads to the day on the first day of creation God carved out through division the realm of time time is a gift now we don't have the stars the sun and the moon so what do we have here we see the light of heaven the very government of God coming into this realm and it's the government of the son of light himself and this is this is absolutely this is absolutely fascinating that we see the government of the sun not the s u not the s u n we see the government of the sun s o n we see the government of the seed of god the the government of the the bread of god the government of the life of god and it is providing this rhythm and this repetition by which we will see the cadence and the poem that is genesis 1 in god said and it is good and he blesses it the next day and you see this rhythm established in the writings of Moses he sees it he speaks it he really sees it and then he blesses it John chapter 1 would say it this way. In the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God. All things were made and came into existence through who? Through him. And without him was not even one thing made that had come into being. In him. In who? In Christ. In the bread. In the seed. In the light. In the life. Was the life And the life was the light of men. And the light shines where? In the darkness. For the darkness has never overpowered it. 
It has never put it out. It has never absorbed it or appropriated it. And it is unreceptive to the darkness. This is fascinating. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the seed. In the beginning was the Christ. And the Christ was the light. And we see here, in the beginning, before there was the sun, there was the light of the Christ who came forth by the spoken Word of God. The light came forth, and with that light came forth a carving of a new realm, a realm of time. And all of a sudden, we begin to see these patterns established, these patterns of of, of, uh, that we can see within even the night and the day. The night and the day. But also in the natural, we can look in to see these other various places of repetition that begin to become this place of a foundation, a foundation that God has given to us and that we are in the winter. But the winter will lead to the spring and the spring will lead to the summer and the summer will lead to the fall and Monday will lead to Tuesday that'll lead to Wednesday, that'll lead to Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday, and Tuesday, and there was night, and there was day, and there was night, and there was day, and it's 12 o'clock, but then it goes back to 1 o'clock, and 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock, and this is not a part of the, the curse, this is not a part of the fallenness, this is a part of the rhythm of heaven, this is part of the, the government of God, that even when all of hell throws everything against you and you feel like man I don't even know where I'm going well you know this it's winter but winter will lead to spring you know that it's Sunday and Sunday will lead to Monday you know this that you will wake up tomorrow and his mercies will be new every morning that this is a gift from God this isn't just repetition this isn't just tradition this is a rhythm from God the first realm the first day the realm of time by which we occupy by which we steward you don't need you don't need more money. You need a revelation of time. You need a revelation of managing and stewarding and gardening because this is what this is what the Lord is doing in this hour. You see, religion would say this is the end of all time. And so just bunker down and do not it's gonna get worse and worse and worse until God destroys everything. But this is what the gospel said for God so loved the world in her worseness, for God so loved the world in her depravity and darkness. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that none would perish. None would perish. None would perish. And in the Hebrew, that word none means none. SRC Children's Ministry, right now, what are they studying? They're studying the very same thing that we're studying. I would just learn of a family every Sunday coming from Portland, Oregon, all the way to Seattle Revival Center because they want their children in our children's church so our children, so their children can learn about Barashit, so that their children can learn about Elohim, so that their, their children can learn about Bara. That, 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 what are we doing here? We are establishing this agreed upon place of covenant and mission that we're not just, we're not just waiting for God to, to rescue us off of this thing. We are hovering in the darkness. We are hovering in the chaos and we are partnering with mighty God to Barah to bring forth kingdom realities. We preach this. We preach Christ Jesus. We preach Genesis 1. Who, the, the Genesis, it, Genesis 1, it, it reeks of the Christ. It reeks of Jesus. It reeks of the gospel. And the gospel is this. It is the good news. It is the good news that you don't have to wait to die to go to heaven. You can have heaven today. Heaven is Jesus. Heaven is the Christ. Heaven is the seed. Heaven is the hope. Heaven is the promise. Heaven is the one who knew no sin, who became all of my sin, so that I could become all of his righteousness. He is the seed. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the light. He is. He is predictable. He is. He is faithful. He is the Christ. He is Jesus. Listen now. You don't need Darren as your shepherd. 
Why? Because if I posture myself in such a way where if I'm not there for you, that's going to that's gonna prohibit your intimacy with the Father, then we've got ourselves a major problem. My job is to point you to the light. My job is to point you to the Christ. My job is to point you to the true and perfect shepherd. I do not want to be your salvation. I do not want SRC to be your, your salvation. SRC is not the light. Darren Stott is not the light. Jesus Christ is the light. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Seattle needs Jesus. If you're here today and you got a lot of issues, you need Jesus. Yeah, what do, what do lesbians need? Jesus. What do gay guys need? Jesus. What do Democrats need? Jesus. What do Republicans need? Jesus. What does Donald Trump need? Jesus. What does Biden need? Jesus. And he has made himself fully available. He is the light. He is the life. He is the seed. He is inside of you. He is inside of me. And he wants to shine. I love, this is my favorite passage. I've preached more times out of this passage than I've preached out of any other chapter in the Bible. I preach more times out of this. Why? Because I, I just, I love everything about it. I, lo I feel like this text, this creation moment, it just, it reeks of the character and nature of my God. My God, who, who is not an escapist. My God, who's not terrified of anything. My God that can create in the most unlikely places. My God who will speak up and is not silent. He shows up, he speaks up, and he creates stuff, and then he blesses it like any good father. I love this passage. Why? Because I see a good, good father who is present and creates the perfect environment by which he is going to knit together all of the cosmos and his favorite of all of creation, his beautiful sons and daughters. Amen. Colossians chapter 1, 15. Final boom. Let me say boom. Now, I would say now, he is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He's speaking of Jesus. Now, he, Jesus, is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation, for it was in him that all things were created in heaven and on earth, things seen, things unseen, whether thrones, dominions, rulers, or authorities, all things were created and exist through him by his intentional intervention and in and for him and he himself existed before all things and in him all things consist cohere and are held together this is what he is saying it is possible to see the invisible through the created visible and the evidence of this is if you want to see God who is a spirit you can see him accurately through Jesus the Christ who was made flesh and dwelt among us and now you can see why there's been such a battle for the womb The womb is a window into the origin of everything and a revelation of the very character and nature of a creator who is also a father. This is why we see over a million abortions in our country every year. when a generation 
forgets its history, it'll abdicate its destiny. The only way our country moves forward is we have to remember the past. The only way we engage with the dream of God for our families, for our cities, for our careers, for the kingdom, is we have to go back and we have to see that he has created us not to survive, not to escape, but to garden, to work the land, to partner with his spirit, to go into the darkness and to brood and to wait for the voice of the Father. The Son said, I only speak what I hear my Father say. This was the dynamic established in Genesis 1 when the Spirit brooded and waited for Father to speak. The new dynamic is the Father, the Son, the Spirit, the bride soaring, creating, dividing, establishing, blessing. All of that when God said, say it with me, let there be light. Let's stand. I feel like sometimes Christianity is like a lot of rules, you know, especially when you're raising kids. You know, Jesus doesn't like liars, so don't lie. And it's kind of like sometimes Christianity becomes a tool that we use to hopefully develop humans that don't kill people, right? Hopefully you get a job, you have a house, you know, and no one dies, right? That's, that's the win. No, nobody died, okay? Listen. There's an opportunity for intimacy with this God who by his word spoke everything into existence. And to think that the evolutionists are, are dead wrong. You didn't evolve from some ape state that God in his brilliance created you for the earth for such a stinking time as this, and yet we would believe that it is our role just to work and fund a 401 and then, you know, retire and then wait to die and, you know, well, meantime, you know, going to church on Sundays and writing tithe checks. The devil's a liar. I mean, don't get me wrong, write the tithe checks, but listen, <laughs> this, <laughs> this thing... It has to shift. Because it, it's so much, the kingdom is so much more than weird American churchianity. It's, it's the kingdom, yo. It's like Father, Creator God is the king of everything. And I believe that He is reforming His church at an accelerated rate of reformation in the last two years where I am telling you our entire nation is saying, I know there's more. I'm telling you our entire nation is saying, I know there's more. I, I, in fact, you hear about it on the news. I, I, like, I, I was just hearing about it. Like, like economists and people are tripping out because they're like, why are all these millennials quitting their jobs? Good jobs. Why are they all quitting their jobs? They're quitting their jobs and they're taking on passion projects and they're, they're learning to paint and they're, they're traveling and they're like, what's going on with this, with, with this generation? I'll tell you what's going on. A generation is saying, we've been tricked. We've been duped. We've been lied to. We were told with, that the cute little house with a picket fence would make us happy, but they 
they lied to us because it didn't. And, and, and the problem is, is that eternity is still in my, is in my heart. And so even though I'm saying, I'm, I've been told that a bunch of material crap will make me happy, eternity is in my heart saying, there's more. You need to create something. And religion says, just shut up and sit down. And, and the world says, oh, just shut up and sit, just do, just do this, do, do this. But I'm telling you, everything is shaking right now. All of creation is groaning and waiting right now. And I'm telling you, uh, you know what you need this morning? You need some stinking life. You need some stinking light. You, you need to say, there is more than religion. There's more than some stupid rules. There's, there's more than just tradition. I'm, I'm going to use what I know is coming. That Monday is coming. I'm going to use what I know is coming as a foundation to come up and to establish. So how many of you here today, you're here not because you want to come to a cute church service. You're here because eternity is roaring in your spirit and you know that you were created for such a time as this. Now listen, you're not going to be able to partner with the king of light if you've made a home for darkness in your soul. And here's, here's what happens. We declare the God of light, but we've, we've, we've created a secret place for darkness within us. And we say, this is who I am. We say, uh, this is what I'm wrestling with. But what we've done is we've actually made a home for darkness within our own soul. And we use words, we do all this stuff, and we get wrapped up in all this trivial nonsense. And we, we spend our lives being, being burned at the fuse by nonsense agendas and nonsense thoughts. And we get all flustered and all stressed out. We can't even sleep at night. We're taking all these pills and all these things. And, and sometimes I see how stressed out people are, but I look at their life, I'm like, what are you even doing? Like, you walk your dog. Like, how are you so stressed out when you just walk your, walk your, listen, I'm telling you, the enemy wants to wear you out and burn you out, and he wants to get you so wrapped up with nonsense agendas so that you abdicate the call of God on your life. Listen to me. Don't believe the lie that if you don't do it, someone else will get your mantle. Nonsense. You're not disposable. You're not a widget. You're not an app. You cannot tell me that God would create you with a thumbprint that nobody on this stinking planet has, nor have they ever had. You can't tell me that your, your, that your DNA, can, that nobody else ever in the history of all humanity has never had your DNA. You can't tell me that God went to the extent that he went to create you just so that you could be another brick in the wall. Some of you... <laughs> Just a couple of music references. Need to rage against the religious machine because it defined your Christianity and it gave you a big sack of crap that you've called your Christianity, but you don't even know him. You don't even know him. You don't know his voice. You don't love him. You profess this and that, but you don't know him. He knows you. He loves you. So please don't swallow the brown pill of American Christianity. Please cough that sucker up and say, I want Jesus. I want life. I want light. I want light. Is there light in it? Is there truth in it? Is there government in it? And if you've got thoughts that are not light thoughts, kick them to the curb. If you've got thoughts that are not light thoughts, quit sharing that trash with others because what you're doing is you're infecting other believers with, your, with, with the darkness that is inside of you, which is just a ploy of the enemy. We... In times like these, we need believers that are salt and light, and they will allow the light of Christ Jesus, the seed, the bread, the word, the life, to come up and out. Do you believe this morning? If you believe this morning, open up your heart, open up your mind, open up your life, open up your resources, open up your wallet, open up your countenance, open up your emotions, and put away the excuses, and put away the griping, and put away the complaining. You, you don't get to complain. 
You really want to wander in a wilderness for 40 years because you're complaining? And if you're going to do that, go alone. Don't take, you don't get to take this tribe with you. Sorry, life, life is too short to hang out with you in a wilderness. Just declare with me right now, let there be light. The light came, the light was the Christ. He came 2,000 years ago, he gave us his spirit. You can have light right now, you don't have to wait any longer. Everyone just bow your head, close your eyes, no looking around, no talking to your friends, just kidding. Just declare with me right now, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the seed, he is the light, he is the life, I've been lied to. I'm done with the lies. Father, unroll in me my scroll of significance. Let me be willing to fight for who I am. Let me be willing to stick up for this person that Christ died for. I pray that I would love myself so that I could truly love others. I pray that I could bless myself so that I could truly bless others with this light, with this life, I engage. And you I live, I move, I have my being. No more games. 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 I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. And when I show up, the light of heaven's going to show up. I'm going to show up. The rhythm of God's going to show up. I'm going to show up. The government of God's going to show up. I'm going to show up. The host of heaven. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up. Demons are going to get bummed out. I'm going to show up. People are going to be changed. Cities are going to be changed. Neighbors are going to be changed. Corporations are going to be changed. Children are going to be changed. Why? Because I'm going to show up. No more games. No more games. No more nonsense. No more nonsense. No more nonsense. No more nonsense. I stink and matter. I matter. I matter. I'm going to show up. I've been lied to. I've been duped. I'm going to show up. The light of heaven is going to show up. The light of heaven is going to show up. I said the light of heaven is going to show up because I'm going to show up. The light of heaven is going to show up because I'm going to show up. I said the light of heaven is going to show up because I'm going to show up. Let there be light. And there was light. And he blessed it. Amen? You guys are awesome. Hey, listen. If you need um, <laughs> if you need prayer for anything, don't feel like you have to go, okay? If you're, if you're going through some stuff, man, just, uh, just come up to the front. We're going to have our prayer minister team just pray for you and, and, and stand for you. Um, also, tonight, Katie Sousa is going to be here. That's at 6 o'clock. Get here early because the place is going to be packed. If you know people that need a miracle, that need a touch from God, um, bring them out tonight. Otherwise, I stink and love you. You're absolutely amazing. Okay, go and be light this week, and we'll see you next week, okay? Bless you guys.